what the like the final alpha would look like, how it would uh, go together with the, the final mesh piece uh, in in CryEngine. Just a taste, I guess. Oh, kind of. So yeah, stone noise. Just go wild. Uh, I can. I don't really think this alpha that I have is super. You should do your own because it's really useful to have. Uh, and uh, as I said, it's not super awesome good, but I can I can uh, share it with you guys if you want to, or don't. If you don't want to put time into making your own, but you should. It is fantastic. So I just went up from strength 12 to strength 21 because uh, I, I want some of these. Oh, I, sh I th should save this. Felt like it was about to crash. I don't want that. So as you can see, I mean, y you could you could really do this without the mask too. If you if you lost the mask, it doesn't really matter, because you will be able to to bring back the the edge uh, with the morph target later anyway. So so as you can see, uh, it was kind of unnecessary for me to be that exact and and putting that much time into the the bigger shapes because I'm going all over with with this brush anyways I mean it wasn't all uh, thrown away because it's really important to have those defined before you go in in I'm putting in detail but Okay, and yeah, I think we got a pretty nasty little edge there. Yeah, doesn't really matter. But I think it looks good. Okay, so uh, as I told you before, I have this little um, Peebles Alpha that I use, uh, which you I think is really cool. Uh, I have a bigger one too. I can show that. That was the first one I did, and it was actually for when I sculpted rocks. Uh, I wanted to have just like some super small uh, stone pieces in there, uh, and uh, it was more of an experiment. And as as you can see, I should have put more time into it because you get all these nasty uh, artifacts. But I think that the my other one is a bit better. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. You still got those artifacts right there, but it gets the job done. So actually, I I, I want to to keep the um, my mask on. It doesn't really hurt to have it. It's just less job for me afterwards to clean things up. It's just easier. Okay, so small peoples. Uh, this is also something uh, that I can share with you, uh, and like with other other brush. I don't really think it's perfect. Uh, I think I'm gonna redo it uh, later because it's really useful but you you have those artifacts and it's not too fun but it works and this is I, I mean this is just small details this is absolutely something you can 
you can ignore and, and put into uh, Photoshop later instead. Just something more for the eye. Um, so uh, I have this uh, math cap that I use for checking out details. I don't know what it's, it's called. FG Gray Metal. It's on uh, ZBrush uh, Matcap section their library. Mm, I think it's it's really good. I I I I mostly use it to present my models because it really brings brings those nice small cracks and stuff to the render. Uh, it's kind of similar to uh, the red Matcap in a way. But I, this one I really hate, but it just shows off uh, detail in a similar way, but it looks much better. Uh, okay, so it's time to go over with a morph brush and create those nice edges. As you can see, I, I already have some definition in there. Um, okay, so I talked about my, my morph random morph brush before. Uh, I realized while I was talking about it that I actually had uh, a brush that was a bit better before, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, and if you do this yourself, you should really like get yourself a, a morph target, um, try out the settings, and really like just see see what results you get and and what the different settings gives you and, and whatever uh, I'm gonna use this right now cuz I'm stupid and lazy Uh, this is also, uh, I mean, the, the Andy Davis uh, tutorial I showed you quickly, uh, which I by now have actually a link to in my YouTube. You can check that out. Uh, I'll give it a link in this video too, uh, with, with with the stone tutorial. I use that for. I have this little concrete uh, block thing in my portfolio. Uh, which I did like just on a, on a late night like a year ago or something um, and I used that exact technique uh, with the scatter brush and the, the morph scattering rough brush to, to get the, the damaged uh, edges all over the, the, the model and I realized that you can actually use the exact same technique to do um, just like on a flat surface use it to make holes uh, and then go back with a morph scattering brush and, and it, it really uh, sells like broken or damaged uh, concrete how how concrete would ship off from from a flat surface So that's also, I mean, you could do uh, just flat, I think I need to go over this edge with a bigger brush later, but it doesn't really matter for now. Um, yeah, it, it, it's really great if you want to do uh, yeah, on something like this, or, or uh, just a decal all by itself for something like a flat surface, it's just, it's just a great way to, to quickly get some concrete shapes going. So I feel that, that my uh, bottom part here doesn't really get as much love as the, the, the 
top part. Uh, so, I mean, if you, if you're doing this uh, and and it's something that goes for production or in your mod or you're gonna show up the the. I mean, if if let's say like this, uh, if you're gonna use this properly, obviously you're gonna use the the button of this uh, would be shown as much as the top part. So you should put as as much time in both of them. Uh, I don't really do that here. Um, I mean, that's kind of good for you guys because it's kind of boring looking at all of this. I would imagine. Because I'm doing just the same things all over. So as you can see, I'm not that uh, precise with my morph scatter brush. Just getting something in there. So as you can see, I've managed to uh, pull up my edge. So I get these tracks in there. I need to go back and fix that. But on the other hand, I mean it's not it's it's the very edge that's the most important thing uh, in something like this since I'm going to bake this and the flat surface right here this big part, uh, it's gonna be blocked out with an alpha anyway, so it doesn't really matter if it's got all those errors or whatever. Okay, so yeah, kind of cool. I don't really like this hard edge right here, so I'm gonna put it out. kind of there still but so you get you get some uh, different results you, if as you could see uh, I just changed my C intensity to 100 from 25 uh, if you have 25 you can just like build up small scale detail. Uh, with 100 it's like super straight on and, and it gets really flat super fast. Uh, different scenarios both of them are good so something you need to get used to. Um, yeah starting to finish up this Yes, so just because I talked about it, I want to show it. Um, I said that you could do uh, damaged concrete on flat surfaces. This could be seen as a little bonus, maybe. Uh, so I'm going to use my uh, standard brush, set the stroke setting to spray. So this is the se actually the same uh, settings that I use for my morph uh, scatter brush. So right now it's going to be like blobby and awful. So the C sub, something a little smaller, something like that. Yeah, just get something going there. I guess that that could be done. Do uh, done with the stone noise. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. So take the morph tar, uh, morph scatter brush, and just go in there bring back some of that flat things <laughs> flat things flat surface and as you can see it, it creates these nice crack like uh, patterns yeah, I think it looks quite cool 